<laughs> Today on the vlog, um, we're actually going to be doing a discussion. It's me and a teammate from my college university. Her name is Laura Anderson and she is now a fighter. And so um, we're going to speak today just about some topics that, well, discussions we pretty much always talk about with uh, being a female athlete, being a female in a sport like wrestling or fighting, combat sports, and um, just kind of some of the, the struggles or the lessons and things that we've learned and grown from. So uh, we have great conversations. I love speaking with Laura, so I'm really excited for her to be here and to uh, share her insights with you guys. Laura Anderson! <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Laura Anderson. I'm a former teammate uh, of Helen from SFU uh, University up in Canada. Um, right now I'm a fighter, but I did um, start off with wrestling up in California or up in uh, Canada first. And I guess what uh, got me into I guess the wrestling scene and the fighting scene was uh, being really passionate about jujitsu and. Once I was 18 when I found the sport and once I found it, it like captivated my soul. There was something about it that kept drawing me back and I did not miss one practice, kept going at it. And then, oh man, it's been a journey a bit. I met this really cool coach, amazing coach who's guided me along my path to fighting and a lot of steps took place, but um, I went to Simon Fraser University with the only mentality of wrestling for my fighting background. I was going to drop out of school, I wasn't going to go back to school, and because of my coach I was able to go back. I learned a really good wrestling um, base. I mean, I wrestled with really amazing, beautiful women, like, oh man, they helped me so much. I guess one of the things I like um, with our conversations is that you've had experience in the wrestling world, um, but you are a fighter and you came from, from fighting. And, uh, use wrestling for fighting and so I think you've gotten a taste of that wrestling world and then also in the fight world and, and you have your own insights and experiences and just like some of the stuff we talked about I think with just uh, being a female in the sport and what do you think that means uh, for your your strength your femininity and how you put those together when you're in such a male dominated Hmm, such a good topic. No pressure. No, no pressure, but... Uh, First question. No, this is a, a thing that I've had to tackle for, like, the whole time I've been fighting, just because, like Helen said, or in wrestling, it's such a male-dominated sport. So, as a woman, being in a room that is populated by mostly men, you begin to want to be like them and act like them, and you lose sight of, like, who you are as a woman and your femininity, and you think you have to strip away some parts, but I think... Um, for me personally, I think women have so much power and they hold so much strength that I've stopped wanting to act like men so I can be more aggressive or be more powerful. Like Men have amazing traits, amazing qualities, but I think we as women, when we understand like who we are and how we can harness like oh, the competition side and the side that we want to let loose and let wild, like so many beautiful things can come from that and it's not more powerful than how the men, you know, compete, but it can be as powerful in a different manner. So I just, a while back, and I think this has also been a journey, I've stopped wanting to compete with men and stopped wanting, stopped wanting to put myself in that category. And I've almost just wanting to like seek out more women and seek out their perspective and like wanting to train with them because I think when we're together, you know, we can create something great, you know? You touched on, on so many different topics that I think is so relevant, especially for young girls today because uh, a lot, again, there's only a few states with women's wrestling, so a lot of girls are training with men, and it really does come in. How do you, or what advice would you give to a little girl? How would you enter the sport where you want to be accepted by your peers, and sometimes we think we just have to blend in and, and be like them in order to be accepted. Uh, but at the end of the day, you're a girl, <laughs> no, yeah. At the end of the day, you're a girl training with a bunch of guys, and <clears throat> I think uh, one thing, a, a quote that really stuck out to me that I liked a lot was, um, equality is not synonymous with sameness. So what's more important, the lock or the key? And uh, and girls and boys, you know, 
we're just two different genders and we're in this sport and um, I don't think you have to try and be like a male wrestler in order to be in the sport of wrestling and I think for young girls uh, it's just really navigating what does that what does that look like and um, I remember I dressed like a boy I talked like a boy and I look back when I was in high school doing interviews and I don't even recognize myself there was this that part of me that I felt I had to suppress um, in order to be accepted yeah. Oh, no, no, I to- <laughs> <up in> here. <laughs> no, I totally agree with everything you said. And that, that first part about uh, you wanting to be accepted by your peers at a young age. I think if I was a little girl, I mean, if I were to talk to little girls or I would have talked to myself back, I don't know, when I started doing um, sports where there's a lot of men, I'd be like, hey, you have to accept yourself first. Mm-hmm. Like, you have to really get that. You are important. You will have to own who you are and not have to want to blend in with all these other people. Because once you can fully accept yourself, like it gives you the space to actually be present and practice and learn from your coach. When you're worried about is he gonna accept me? Are they gonna like me? You don't give your safe you don't give yourself that space to learn. So I would just say accept yourself first and understand that if you really want this, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks or anyone else's opinions because no one's gonna care more about your dream than you are. So accept that, own your dream, and just like go for it. Yeah. And that's not to say that there aren't going to be challenges. Uh, I remember when I started, when I first moved away and did my first women's camp, I remember how weird it was to see other girls wearing pink shirts and colorful socks and spandex. And in my mind, I just felt uncomfortable wearing spandex when I trained uh, with guys, whether it was capris or whatever. I had to wear baggy sweatpants. And, and so I remember just loving uh, that part of experience being on a women's team at a women's camp where, um, you know, those little things I didn't have to worry about and I could start to be myself and um, whether that's what, whether that was expressing myself through st- in style or, you know, just joking with girls and, and getting to have those relationships. And so when I came back to uh, high school wrestling, it wasn't necessarily that I felt that I had to all of a sudden change and own my femininity and wear spandex in that exact moment. I think it's more like what you said where you just start to become a bit more self-aware and you realize, okay, why am I doing this? Well, does it does it just make things easier to wear some some baggy shorts right now to fit in? Um, maybe, is that you know better in the long run? I don't know, as opposed to like wanting to stand out. I, I think really what you said is just kind of cutting away all the distractions and I think as uh, girls and boys, you're going to have distractions, you're going to have things, whether it's, um, you know, in your social life or just things that might want to take your focus away from your training. But for girls, I think there's also this added distraction of caring what people think about fitting in, um, about trying to prove uh, that you belong in the sport. And I would say that you should work hard and you should really focus on your goal, really center in on, on why you're wrestling and what you want out of it so that it um, kind of blinds, you know, blinds your peripherals to, to what's around and, and the other things that can be a distraction. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We can no, edit it. No, I, no, I, <laughs> I, I totally agree. Yeah. I think um, the whole sense of belonging, like we all as people want that. We want to belong somewhere. And like you keep saying, like we want to blend in or we want to be a part of something. And I think it's, that's why I think it's very important for women to train with women mm-hmm. because we belong together, you know? Yeah. When we're, you know, when we're together, we're more powerful as opposed to one woman training with like a whole bunch of men. And yeah, the idea is cool, you know, to train with men. You know, we think we get a lot out of it because they're stronger, stronger than us. Like we get a good workout, but we need that community of women as well. So I think belonging is important and understanding that you will always belong, but understanding that you will, you can belong with other people, you know, and people who are like you and like think like you, you know, like us women. And how Helen said, I think. In wrestling, or I didn't grow up in wrestling, so I didn't start wrestling until college, so until I was 23. So I didn't grow up, but I did come from like sports, and you get this notion that, like I said, you have to be like a man and you have to dress rugged and you have to act like a certain way. And then I go to Summon Frazier, and these are like the most beautiful athletes I have ever seen. They they do their makeup right after practice, they get fixed up, and I'm like, hold up. I did not know you could be such a beautiful woman and be so aggressive and so like just gnarly on the mats and going out there and experiencing like a different culture and understanding that it's okay was something that like I don't know really has helped me as an athlete as a woman and someone pursuing this career <laughs> for sure yeah and kind of to, to go off what you said a little bit and to come 
back for, I know that I, there's a ton of messages um, of girls who maybe you're the only girl on your team full of boys. And that was from seven to 16. That's something I really uh, experienced, went through, struggled with. And my, I guess what I would highlight also, cause you're probably thinking, well, how do I get to train with other women? Or, well, what's your advice if I just don't have access to that? And um, I, I would say, uh, belonging the you can belong and still stand out you belong in the sport of wrestling you belong whether you stand out or not just because you feel like you don't look like what the wrestler's supposed to look like doesn't mean you don't belong and so um, you might never get to that point where you're not gonna look like the other guys you might not ever act like the other guys think like the other guys talk like the other guys that doesn't mean you don't belong in this sport because um, the sport doesn't have a gender technique doesn't have a gender hard work does not have a gender and so uh, just again, like own your own yourself, own who you are, and um, I, I would say just just be aware of that. And it is a it is a tough journey because you're going through something, and chances are you have a male coach, so it's not like you can go to them and, and they can help share with you from their experiences. They they've never been a female wrestler. They're never going to be. They're never going to understand it, and that's okay. And so I think one thing we really want to do is just kind of. Uh, just encourage all you girls that are on boys teams like it's okay and college opportunities are there they're opening up um, I believe that women's NCAA division one wrestling is you know the next thing coming and we have so many um, people working behind the scenes to make that happen and so more and more opportunities are, are going to present itself where this discussion will hopefully be irrelevant where you won't need to be on a guys team because you'll have a team of women mm -hmm. that you're you're training with but until then my advice is um, you know, focus on your goal and what you really want. And when those doubts come into your head and maybe when it's, you know, you, you feel like, oh, this isn't gonna change or um, is it worth it to, to go through this? Just remember that there's so many good opportunities ahead for girls in women's wrestling and that they're only gonna continue to grow. So just, if it's really your dream, stick with it, see it through. And you are so much tougher than you think. You're so much stronger than you think. That's kind of intimidating. <laughs> That's yeah, you're geez. a lot tougher than you think. Yeah, <laughs> like we're about to fight some coyotes, trying to tell you guys <laughs> to keep with it, don't give up. <laughs> no, but just to like add on, uh, when I say like you know find you know find women to like wrestle with, like maybe like yeah, I didn't necessarily mean that. I meant find women like you can like girls like find someone in another, another sport you know like they're all experiencing the same thing we all go through the same emotion like I bet you every girl has wanted to cry during practice at one point you know like that's something like I have encountered guys don't understand that but girls do understand that <laughs> so if that ever happened like these emotions that we carry as women like just find someone in a sport you know yeah. who's like as passionate as you or find a mentor and I know the girls like on USA Wrestling or just like at any college, if you reach out to them, they will more than likely respond with any you know, with any answers yeah. you have to your question. So I would say reach out, find women that you know that are interested in almost, if not the same thing, kind of the same thing as sports, but you know, the resources are there. You know, you're like Kellen said, you're not alone. Resources are always there when you want to reach out for help. Yeah. It's interesting what you said about crying and boys who might not understand it because I do think there's something to um, I do think there's also this stigma in wrestling that you have to be tough and I and I think just naturally the sport is going to make you tough because of how demanding it is and you don't have to put in extra stuff to to prove that and I feel like boys I just want to encourage them too I feel like they struggle with this where they aren't really allowed to have an outlet or express their emotions either in the sport and it's an emotional sport mm -hmm. there are highs and lows it is hard when you're giving all of yourself to something you're putting your emotions in it whether you outwardly express those emotions or not mm -hmm. and I think I'm like I know there's so many boys that want to cry or that yeah. do cry and, um, and I think uh, girls and boys are both expressing their emotions just in different ways and so for boys I think uh, my big advice for, for guys is to reach out and to find good mentors um, and, and ask those questions. I think as women, we do a good job of picking each other's brain and really asking about um, you know, some of those more emotional aspects and not just how do you do this technique, mm -hmm. but more how do you handle with this or mm -hmm. how do you deal with this. And I think sometimes it's harder for guys, it's, it's not really maybe as it feels as natural for them to open up those questions but uh, for me in sport it's benefited me greatly and maybe a lot of them do but I, I yeah. just feel like you can do something.
I definitely agree. I think, I mean, for men and women, I think it's super important at a young age to be fully aware of your emotions and understand what your emotions mean to you. You know, like if you lose and you're sad, does it mean that I'm not good enough or does it mean that I have to go back and practice and learn, you know? So I think for a little boy, for boys and not having an outlet, just like how Helen said, having a mentor or reaching out and finding someone that you trust because that's the big part. If you can find someone you trust and you can talk to them about your losses, about your frustrations, about things that you can't really talk at the practice room, I think that's a really good outlet. Just yeah. becoming more aware, like always self-aware of everything that's going on inside here. Because a lot of times, whatever is going on inside here becomes reflected out there. And when we're at peace and when we're confident and we have, you know, when we're feeling good, we wrestle good. But if we're in turmoil and we're not, you know, we're unsure, or we just have so many things going on, then we're going to wrestle or practice or like compete like crap. So I think once we become more aware and we have people to talk to about, you know, I think that's awesome.